Sufi is a professor of economics at Stanford University and an advisor to Microsoft uh, where she acts as Microsoft's chief economist. Uh, Susan, welcome to Arts and Labs Innovation Central. Hi, it's great to be here. Susan, you've done a lot of thinking about the way in which uh, the intellectual economy needs innovation. What are the chief features that you think it most requires? So, well, that's a very broad topic. I think that the um, innovative economy uh, needs entrepreneurship, um, and that's really a, a, a key feature of what's made our economy so successful. So one of the areas that I've been focusing on a lot is internet search. And that has been an amazing product for the economy because all sorts of different businesses, small businesses, have figured out how they can be found. Uh, so you can have a, a, a brand new small company that can reach you know, millions of people and, and achieve success very quickly. But of course, one of the, the key things for uh, you know, getting investment and having people be willing to put money into your new business or even you deciding that it's a good idea to, ha to, to, to invest as yourself as an entrepreneur is knowing that if you make the best product, that indeed consumers will have the opportunity to choose your product. So one of the, the really important um, aspects of an innovative economy is, are the ways that people find things and whether they are fair and whether they really surface the highest quality uh, the highest quality products. So I think that's really a, a key element of letting economic forces uh, you know, reinforce and support and reward uh, entrepreneurial innovation. Susan, is the current search regime working or does Google control too much of the marketplace? Sure. So um, in a lot of ways it works very well and of course in the United States we do have um, a, a, a large uh, share of users who are using a competitor, Bing, um, but not large enough to constrain them the way that you might like. In Europe, it's really a very different story. In many countries, Google has about 95% of the market. And I think it's something that in the U.S. we really take for granted that you know there there will be competition in search, and in Europe I think people probably take for granted that there will be investment uh, in this product even though they have this dominant firm. But if you're an entrepreneur in Europe, you really have to worry if you're if you're a company that needs to be found on the internet. If there's just one way to find you. And really, you know, almost everybody is using Google. Then, you know, it just even an algorithmic change can put your firm out of business overnight. And we've seen that happen to a lot of firms. So it can be just an accident in some cases. And there, you would just wish that there was more diversity. But in some cases, it's not an accident. It's the case that Google has decided that they want to enter a particular business, whether it be shopping comparison. Um, or what have you, and they will promote their own products above the others. And so Google will say that it's all about the consumer and that competition is, is one click away. Of course, until it isn't. That is, the, uh, you know, either the, the quality of the search engine competitors in Europe is actually lower because they don't have enough data to learn what consumers want. And then, um, secondly, you know, the, they're, they're actually not always putting the consumer first, uh, especially when it comes to their own products. Susan, final question, uh, you, and I know you're carefully watching what's happening in Europe in terms of their investigation of Google. Do you have any sense of how, how this thing is going to get worked out? Oh, that's the, that's the billion dollar question that everybody wants to know. I think in Europe, um, a, a firm with a dominant position, and I don't think anybody would argue that Google has a dominant position in Europe, has a special responsibility to, and that's, yeah. that's a technical term, to ensure that they do not impede competition. And so I think that some of the behavior that Google's engaged in in Europe really clearly violates that special responsibility. You know, you can say, well, it's just an accident that I have demoted my competitors and put them out of business in, in these areas like vertical shopping and so on. But you actually have a responsibility to not do that accidentally. You have a responsibility to make sure that your conduct is such that competitors can, in fact, thrive in your market, that your behavior doesn't preclude them from success. So I think that the Europeans understand that there's an issue and they're taking a, a close look at it. 
Susan, I want to thank you so much for appearing on the Arts and Labs Innovation Central. Thank you. Thank you.